in 1846, Gloucester artist Fitz Henry Lane, known primarily as a maritime painter, created this beautiful lithograph view of the Newburyport waterfront as seen from across the river. Reprinted many times, and often hand-colored, as here, the initial impression this picture gives is to the importance of the outfitting and barrel-making activities in the foreground. However, the engraving process that produced these lithographs provided an extremely high fidelity to the background image of the waterfront. That and an intimate knowledge of the waterfront area allow for detailed tour. Warehouses on Coombs's and Johnson's wharves seen through the brig's rigging. There are two brick buildings on Bartlett's wharf. The inner one was later used for the Fiberloid Company, and the outer was the Cashman Machine Shop, both burned in the early 1900s. Behind that is James Textile Mill, later the Victoria Mill. It was used later as a shoe manufactory. Docks between these wharves ran all the way up to Water Street. The brig is at the inshore end of the dock between Johnson's and Bartlett's wharves, and is heeled over the blocks. The ship Ohio, launched April 7, 1846, by Stephen Jackman, first steam sidewheeler built and used in Newburyport. The ship made regular runs from here to Boston for John Wood and son of Commercial Wharf. It was sold in May 1847, then ran between New Orleans and Galveston. So this image captured the Ohio during its only year in operation. Over the Ohio's pilot house are warehouses on Davenport's, later called Bailey's Wharf. The next slip was used as a mast yard, then follows Carter's Wharf and Fowler's Wharf. Between the two, the bark Lenark is under construction. In the background, the smokestack and the bell tower belong to the Globe Mill, later called the Peabody Mill, and the site of today's tannery. The old South Church is behind the bell tower. There is also a Universalist church at Middle Street and Fair Street. Services ended there around 1879, and it was used as a glue or shoe factory before it burned down in 1899. Between the mizzen and main masts of the ship is the Custom House and its wharf. Next is Gunnison's and then Granger's Wharf, recognizable by the stacked lumber. Ferry Wharf is next, from where John March ran the original ferry to Rings Island in the late 1680s, without interruption through 1885. Finally, the small ship to the right is being rigged at City Wharf, formerly Greenleaf and then Currier's Wharf. In the background are the two towers of the Prospect Street Congregational Church, which is no longer there, the chimneys of the Bartlett Mills, which burned in 1881, and the Harris Street Presbyterian Church, and the Unitarian Church on Pleasant Street. The schooner showed here is tied up at the end of City Wharf. Next is Central Wharf, with a long wooden warehouse that, at this time, was being used by Charles H. Lunt for his fish and importing business. At Brown's Wharf, a brig is heeled over for repairs to the bottom, an interesting process where the ship would sit on blocks and would lean over during low tide. Then repairs had to be made in a hurry before the tide came back in. The wharf was built by Moses Brown for his fish and West Indies trade in the early 1800s, and originally included a brick distillery building. In the background is the bell tower of the Putnam Free School, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and the Old North Church, with a square tower that burned in 1919. Moving west, we see a bit more of Brown's Wharf, then, starting in the open area and continuing behind the ship, is the shipyard and wharf of Obadiah Horton, later McKay's shipyard, and still later Atkinson and Fillmore. The two schooners are tied up at Patch's Wharf. These may have been fishing schooners owned by French and Horton, who also owned a bakery on Merrimack Street where they made hard tack. Finally, in this view, we see William's Wharf, where the William brothers stored and sold lumber. Following that is the Eastern Railroad trestle, which, to the left of the mast in the foreground, runs across land that was Hoyt's mast yard. The railroad then continues across the top of the barn bridge. Originally a suspension bridge built in 1827, it was rebuilt in 1840 to carry the railroad tracks on top. The original barn was still used for vehicle and foot traffic as a toll bridge.